Let's continue on from where we left off with software development. And the focus today is to look into actual techniques that help us design software. So we're going to be looking at finite state machines today. And we're also going to be looking at the purpose of state transition diagrams to document algorithms. And both these tools are very useful in mapping out thinking and how different parts of the system can relate to each other. In the exam, you will need to decipher and decode these, and you should be able to solve questions either based on a partial state transition diagram or a finite state machine diagram, or you will need to create one. These are terms that will come up in the exam, either in definition form or in a comparison form. So FSMs are mathematical models of machines that can be in one state out of a number of fixed state, and one state can transition into another through an external input. So hot can transition to cold if an external input, which is basically temperature or coolant, impacts it. So if the temperature falls down, hot can change to cold. And if a coolant is applied, the same thing happens. The temperature goes from hot to cold. And that can also apply to computer systems where you might have a particular state and the data acts on it, which leads to a new state. Now the state transition diagram is basically showing the behavior of a finite state machine and you have a state transition table that shows every possible state of a FSM and each possible input and what the state is after that input. Now in exams you'll need to understand how a state transition table and a diagram works and you might need to change a table into a diagram or vice versa. So let's start first by looking at finite state machines. We already know that they are mathematical models and they can be in one state out of a number of fixed one. States can transition from one to the other, but you need to be acted upon by an external input. And a diagram showing the behavior is on screen. Now an FSM on its own is not a diagram. It's a machine or a mathematical model, a conceptual model. The state transition diagram is the diagrammatic version of an FSM. So in this case, you got a TV remote control so the initial state is off when you press the power button it turns on and when you press the button again it turns off so you can see that the state changes based on the input that is applied to it now state transition diagrams have various different symbols so states are represented as nodes which are basically circles transitions are represented as interconnected arrows Events are represented as labels on the arrow, so remote button pressed is an event. The conditions can be specified in square brackets or a partition after the label. So in this case, if you press the remote button, the power is cut. Now the initial state where everything starts from can often be indicated by an arrow with a black dot. That tells you that start at this particular point. And a stop state where you end is normally a circle within a circle. So it's a double circle. And on a diagram, if you see that, that's your end state. And you can have one or multiple end states in a state transition diagram. So do pause the video and get familiar with the symbols before you continue. Okay, so let's decipher this state transition diagram. Pause the video, have a look and see if you can apply the symbols to work out what's going on. Okay, so hopefully you've gone through this and you work out the answer. You start in the lock state, and if the number is two, you move on to the second digit where you wait for entry. Otherwise, you keep looping to the lock state because it's not the right code. And if the number is five, you move on to the next state, waiting for the third digit, and if it's not five, you go back to the lock state because somebody's entered the incorrect code. And in the, in the waiting for the third digit part, you wait for the input nine, which then allows you to unlock that particular door. If it's not nine, you go back to the beginning, to the lock state. So the person has to enter the code 259 to unlock the door. Otherwise, it resets to the lock condition. Now, a state transition diagram can be given in an exam and you are asked to answer questions based on it. So on screen using the same diagram, questions could be how many transitions result in a different state. So you know that two, five, and nine, there are three transitions that result in a different state. 
entering 9 and 5 also results in a different state but the 2 results in the same state so if you don't enter 2 in the locked state then it stays there so you have 5 possible transitions that result in a different state so how many transitions have associated outputs now if you look at the labels there is no brackets or lines indicating that uh, output is made so the answer would be zero in this case the label that should replace x that's obviously your start condition and the final or halting state is where you get the double circles which basically is the unlocked state so those are the type of questions you are going to get with state transition diagrams and sometimes you might be given conditions like a state transition table and then you need to create the diagram based on the table okay your task now is to go through an actual question so what you see on screen is a bit of context given to you and a state transition diagram now a state transition diagram basically is just a table where all the different types of states are listed and what are the events that allow it to go to a next state or transition to a next state so you will need to read the paragraph and work out what happens if the current state is off and you do a single press on the remote what's the next state so you'll need to fill this up in exams you might end up being given a state transition table like the one there which you need to complete and you would need to construct a straight transition diagram based on that table as well so in this task we're going to do it the other way around we're first going to just map out the states in the table and then you will have to draw the state transition diagram for the television's operation. So pause the video and go through this task. Okay, that takes us to the end of this session. Hopefully you know what the purpose of a finite state machine is. It's a mathematical or conceptual model which allows us to map how things might operate in the real world. You know how to draw a state transition diagram and you know how to decode a state transition diagram itself and in addition to that you know how a state transition table works and you can use that to create diagrams and vice versa. I'll see you in the next session.